Scarbrand is homeless. <laughs> We're going to see if it's possible to survive a Total War Warhammer 3 campaign with no settlements. From turn goddamn one. Let's go. So we begin our Hobo Scarbrand campaign with the First Order of Business, get that hero in there, and then do something you wouldn't normally do, abandon and destroy your home settlement. Because Scarbrand's a free spirit, he doesn't want to be chained down with commitments. He wants to run free and feel the sand between his hoofs and the wind between his horns. Probably. We take out the starting army anyway, and we are well on our way. Now I try to recruit a few units before the settlement is destroyed, but I'm not sure what order it does things, whether it'll destroy the settlement first or whether it'll recruit first. Turns out it destroys the settlement first, so you can't recruit anything. No more extra units for me. So it looks like I'm going through this entire campaign with just these eight units, unless I get some free heroes or maybe some regiments of renown. I'm not sure if I need territory for that though. But here we are raising up our first settlement or technically our second settlement if you include my own. And we're going to get our first blood host army which are going to be very important for surviving this because otherwise it's eight units for the entire campaign and that just sounds like a bad idea. So these blood host armies really going to be important for Hobo Scarbrand to stay alive. And you may be thinking, hey, you're just going to take attrition and die with no settlements. Well, if you stay in a camp stance, you're fine. To the actual victory objectives of this campaign, it's a pretty simple and free one. All you got to do is win a quest battle and sack and raise loads of places. That's about it. You do have to take out the seducers, which the high elves might do for you anyway. Pressing on with this campaign, I decide to head towards the top knots and try to finish off their stuff as they've got a fair bit of territory around and it's ill defended. I split up my two armies as they're both pretty powerful by themselves. They don't really need to take out these settlements together so I can double my output by spreading them out. Scarbrand going to sack this place up. Gonna go for the skulls in this case just to get some skulls on the board and to be careful of money. I don't want to get too much negative income. I don't have a ton of money right now. Over this side though where there's a little bit more action I'm going to attack the first settlement. We've got a pretty strong army here. We've got three skull cannons so that's pretty nice. I decide to fight this battle to try and get the best result so I can keep on rolling with this army a little bit. The skull cannons give us some nice mobility to harass missiles and to spread some fear about. Now because there is more to do over this side I'm going to get myself another blood host army and then I can continue to roll on the top knots. And of course these armies are kind of a little bit expendable right it doesn't matter too much if they die I can get more they're going to die after a few turns anyway so I can be a little bit more carefree on how I use these and if I'm auto resolving I don't have to worry about a single unit dying or anything which I really do have to with my main army. Into the next turn and the top knots are coming at me, a close defeat predicted. My armies are pretty beaten up but Savage Orcs early game are pretty easy to scare off. And while I did take a feral pounding from the damage of the Savage Orcs, we were able to scare them away charging skull cannons around like nobody's business. And with that we seem to have the top knots mostly taken care of. I now set my sights on Malagor and his one settlement. I check if it is just the one settlement he has and I decide well this is going to be my next move I guess but as I move over my other armies I find more top knots. Two settlements to be precise so I decide to take care of those first before getting myself in another war just in case Malagor is around somewhere I haven't seen him yet. So we head for Galbaraz, Scarbrand makes the attack and it's actually a siege settlement this one so I'm going to lose a lot if I auto resolve it so gotta fight it. This was a bit of a tough and awkward battle. I did get a bit worried I was going to lose it. At one point they had some missiles. They were firing down on me. I couldn't easily disrupt them. Eventually though, I did fight my way through a lot of the army, but I made it to the victory point and just captured that. So I didn't have to try and take out the entire army. So I got that W and then raised it up for another blood host army as my other ones were on their last legs. Just so we could keep the momentum rolling and keep just running around sacking, raising everywhere. We got 16 grand in the bank at the moment, bit of negative income, but we should be fine for a good while as long as we can keep fighting. Malagor then realizes, oh shiz, a homeless Scarbrand is outside my settlement. I better get some non-aggression quick. Sadly for him though, that was not on the table and homeless Scarbrand and the boys were a coming. I do of course move my other armies over here so I do get the support from my blood hosts. I then decide to get more skulls here though, just because I feel like I should have a bunch of skulls on hand in case I need them for anything. Don't know, didn't really think that much about it, just went for skulls on this occasion. With that, we made Malagor join the homeless club, so now he's a hobo too. As I went marching on to find the last of the top knots though, I ran across some French. And what do we do when we see the French, everybody? We attack them! That's right, yes. But oh, these French think they're funny as they declare war on us first, and then they attack us! And I'm forced to make one of the most embarrassing decisions of my life and retreat from the French! After this though, the silly French boys left themselves all alone. They could have retreated here, but they stood their ground. And as I was going to lose a unit to water resolve, I decided to fight this. Much like the Greenskins, it was quite easy because we just scared them all away. And we went on to take their nearby settlement where they put up about as much resistance as they did against the Germans in World War II. 
Yeah, they just let us walk in and take the place pretty much. All right, that's my French bashing quota out the way for the day. So another settlement raised, another blood host army spawned. Now just to finish off the last of the French boys. Once we took them out, they had one more settlement, which again, they didn't leave a garrison in. So basically free stuff for us here. I decided not to get another blood host army though, as the income is getting a little bit dire at minus a thousand. At this point though, we pretty much got this area wiped out of settlement. So it feels like it's time to move on to some new lands, which I decide shall be Tilia. As I head into the water though, I'm reminded of the fact that I can't get any kind of encampment while I'm in the water, so I'm going to be taking attrition from not having a settlement. And I start to wonder if this was maybe a good idea. I've got one of my blood host armies on ahead over there anyway. These other two though, still on the shore. But guess who appears over the next turn to shit me up? It's old hobo brother Malagor. With his full stack potentially coming at me in the water, I did not like my chances here, so I decided to go back on land and find a better way around for my other two armies. My one blood host army that was already over there though, I was just going to commit to that cause and see if he could do anything. Maybe he could take down a settlement or two and make himself useful. I should say as well at this point, I was picking technologies that really helped this playstyle as much as possible. Going to get the sounds of war for some summons in the battles. That should be incredibly useful when you don't have many units. On the next turn though, it looked like Malagor might be following me, might be trying to get me. And as he has a full stack, I decided just to hightail it out of there. Although his army isn't too dangerous looking at it, but I do have to be careful if I'm not fighting settlement battles very often and getting those new blood host armies, I am going to run the risk of getting worn down. Over in the Tilian region, which is of course now Aranesa controlled, I do have a couple of options to attack. I'm not at war with Aranesa yet, but I am now. So I'm going to go after some of these settlements to try to raise them up. I can get a close victory. I'll take that in auto resolve and get myself a new blood host army so we can maybe raise two or three settlements over this side. Meanwhile, Scarbrand and co head north to try and find a better way across the river. But hey, look who's taken himself a settlement and isn't so homeless anymore. It's old Malagor. I'm glad things are looking up for him. But I'm going to bring him back down to hobo status and take out his settlement again. I did need to fight it to avoid losing units, but no bother scaring off those beastmen. This is a nice boost as well for me as I can get another blood host army here, which I really do need as my one I've got with me now is probably on its way to fizzling out. So this is keeping us going. We just need the occasional raise of a settlement to keep a blood army with us. Otherwise, Scarbrand's small army is very prone to being wiped out by some random full stack, at least until we can get Scarbrand more powerful and turn him into a one man army. Back over on the Tilian coasts, I decide to attack this walled siege settlement here, which I decide may be a little bit too much. I don't want to get too beaten down from this, so I decide to leave this and go off and find something else real quick. But then I realize, oh, Scheisse Aranessa's army is right on my case. Maybe I can get the hell out of here, but it turns out my movement range is not enough to really get away. So I decide to just stick with my original plan and just attack this settlement and fight it and try to win it that way. And maybe we can at least raise this before we get wiped out by Aranessa. And that was thankfully what I was able to do. I did have to fight it, but luckily zombies do crumble pretty quick, even when half dead blood letters are smashing them in the face. I then decided to get another blood army just to try and maybe fend off Baronessa or at least do some damage to her. Who knows what I could maybe get away with. It really depended what was in the blood host army because Aranessa's army is quite tough. There's a lot of missiles in there, of course, but I didn't really get a fantastic army, so didn't look like I had much hope. She did indeed come for me on that next turn. I had a lot of blood letters. I thought maybe if I could just create a nice long wide line and surround and envelop this army, maybe I could take it out. So I fought the battle, tried my best, Unfortunately, I got a bit screwed over by the positioning of my reinforcement armies. One of them was off to the left, which is okay, but the other one is behind the enemy army. So that was just kind of three small armies that I had, and they were able to just descend on each part of my army individually and just take them all out. So I didn't really stand much of a chance, but we got a little bit of damage done. Mostly got blasted to pieces, though. So that was the end of my time in Tilia. Aranessa said no thank you. I then needed to decide where to go next. I thought about Bretonnia and all the squishy Frenchmen, but it might be quite hard to get there. And then I thought, well, just the Empire. It's a similarly squishy army that's quite easy to get through. They'll probably have small garrison settlements. Let's go there, the Promised Lands. As I enter the water to cross the river, <laughs> crabs, crabs me lord on the shore. I now have to decide whether to get back out and just walk up past Barak Var or just go for it. And I decide the latter. I throw caution to the wind. I've been scared out of the water once. Not again. We're going forward this time. If they come at us, so be it. We got Scarbrand this time, so as long as we can stop their missiles from firing, we should be fine. And we roll into the next turn, and what do they do? Oh, Scheisse! They go for the other boys. What? That settlement was Scrags, now it's Clan Angrens, and it looks like Aranessa's is attacking them. Whatever, I don't care. I'm moving forward, getting the hell away from them as quickly as possible. Now at this point, down to just one half-dead Bloodhost army, I feel like I need to attack another place and get another Bloodhost army. 
As there's a Scrag settlement right in front of me, I decide to go for that, but not before checking if there's any large Scrag armies over here, because I don't want to declare war on him and then have him destroy me and wipe my armies out from that. So I'm just going to do this while there's seemingly nobody around, get myself another Blood Host army, and then hopefully push on through to those Empire lands. It's another battle I had to fight, but it was mostly a bunch of knobs, so no big deal. And we get that refreshing Blood Host army again. Feels good. I feel a little bit safer now, especially as this other Blood Host army is about to die off. I then get myself moving before any disgruntled Aranessa or Scrag armies appear, and we finally arrive at the Promised Land, with a nice Avalon settlement ready to take with a small garrison, no army there. Lovely. So in theory here, if I can start to snowball and get lots of Blood Host armies and have lots of small settlements to attack and take out, this could be pretty nasty. I do have a banner for regeneration here, which I'm going to put on Scarbrand, and one for a direct damage spell, which I'm going to put on my hero. So Scarbrand just got even more disgusting. I bring over all my armies so that I can get a decisive victory, which I auto-resolve. This thing gives us the regeneration, or replenishment rather, and another Blood Host army. So things are looking like they're going to get pretty nasty at this point. I decide the best way to move through this area, rather than just running straight into the middle of all these different Empire factions that might declare war on me and come and attack me all at once, I'm just going to skirt the edge and try to make my way around at this left side which starts by dealing with the Golden Order, who on the next turn, conveniently, say, we're going to declare war on you, unless you give us some money, please. So I say, oh no, please don't hurt me, Mr. Golden Face, and I give him the money with a wry smile on my face. Over the next turn, I got offered a quest battle, which made me realize, hey, one of my victory conditions is to do that quest battle, but I've only got an eight-unit army that I can take into a quest battle. How the hell am I going to be able to do the quest battle? I figure if I was going to do it, I'd probably just need to make Scarbrand into an absolute beast and get him to, like, level 40 and give him loads of crazy items, get him 90% ward save, and then it would probably be doable with just Scarbrand alone. But that was all hypothetical, as I didn't actually have intention to do that. Anyway, after telling Balthazar Gelt I didn't want a war with him, I then went to war with him, attacking his poor little force-marched army that had stood itself right in front of my three armies. I'll let you imagine how that one went. We pressed on over the big river, which did slow us down for a turn before we could get to the rest of the Golden Order lands. There was a settlement right there for the taking, and take it we did on the next turn. This was a decisive victory, another nice easy blood host army to be gained here. Although I could start sacking these places for a little bit more money, I'm not in desperate need of money by any means. Rolling into the next turn though, and Balthazar Gelt himself showed his face. I didn't think he'd be silly enough to charge into us at this point, but then, oh, not the Emperor himself. Oh, luckily he just wants some money so that we don't go to war. I'm fine with that. We'll keep him off our back for now while we deal with the Golden Order, who have decided to attack me with a stack and a bit. Predicted a decisive defeat. I thought long and hard about this. I tried to decide, do I fight this or do I try to retreat and maybe hope that they can't pursue me? We were a fair distance away. I think maybe we can retreat. Maybe. I decide to try it. Take all three of my armies into retreat. He attacks them all. Hopefully he doesn't catch anyone by themselves like that. But oh no. Ooh. Feel like I dodged a bullet there. They decide not to pursue us. We're able to escape them that turn a little bit over the river, but then Avalon comes along and attacks us from the other side of the river. And then I'm forced to retreat again back into goddamn Gelt. And luckily they don't pursue us either. They happen to be on the other side of the river, so they can't get across in the same turn. And my God, Corn was on our side there. We narrowly avoided the campaign coming to an end right there, I think, too. Well, a stack and a half of Avaland, a stack and a bit of Golden Order. If we could have somehow survived those two attacks, I don't think we would have had enough left to be able to take a settlement after that. Plus, there's another Golden Order army in that settlement there. I now descend all my armies onto Balthazar Gelt's armies, though, and try to get him and at least this army wiped out. We engage them. We got two fairly healthy armies, two not so healthy armies, but they can still run in, do some stuff, disrupt some missiles. So we're going to go for it. As I attacked the smaller army, it meant they were on the battlefield first, with the other one being the reinforcements, so we had time to try and destroy this small army. I was keeping my blood letters back because they were nearly dead, though. I didn't want to lose them from my main army, as my doggos as well. Just kept them out the way. Scarbrand, my hero, and my chaos warriors, able to do the majority of the work here. But a bit of a ball kicker for somebody here, as you see, our reinforcement armies, our big ones, are coming in next to each other. So that's going to be fun. Could actually work in my favor, maybe, as I'll be able to close the distance on their missile units quickly. But turns out it's just a big goddamn mess. My boys come in into the back of these Empire troops. They can get into some of the missiles a little bit. They can cause a problem at least and clump them up, slow them down. I've got some blood shrines and some skull cannons that can charge around and disrupt a little bit. So that's really helpful. 
That was one of my more beaten up armies though, so it's not that huge of a deal and that huge of a loss for me if those units get killed. One of my better armies coming up the hill, they've got a fair trick. But once we do get there, we are able to overwhelm the Empire troops, break their leadership, rout them off the map as a lot of them are stood right next to the edge of the map. So we're able to get this victory without taking too much damage ourselves. And that's good because we got a bunch more armies we may have to potentially fight. There's a Golden Order army in that settlement there. The two Avaland armies might be too far away because they got to get across the river. But the remainder of this Balthazar Gelt army is still alive. So I'm going to finish that off. Decisive victory. Again though, I am going to fight it to try not to take too much damage. But I'm getting to the point where I need more blood host armies as my current ones are running out of turns before they're going to disintegrate. I do try to set a little trap on the end of this turn, putting two of my armies into ambush stance to maybe catch either of these two Avaland armies or maybe this Balthazar Gelt Golden Order army in the settlement. On to the next turn and does it work? Do they fall for the ambush? No, they don't. The Golden Order army comes at me, doesn't fall for the ambush, only two reinforcing armies, not looking good. I decline that attack. They attack me anyway, of course. I retreat from that situation, and then the dwarfs come at me, declaring war on me, or at least threatening to declare war on me if I don't give them money, and I decide, you know what, the dwarves are all the way over there. They're probably not going to be able to bother me. Fuck them. At this point, I decide I need to find another settlement to raise quickly so I can get another fresh blood host army. I spot Karak Hearn in the mountains, so I start to head towards that with all of my armies. As the Golden Order army has gone back to that settlement, it's a little too hard to take a siege settlement with a full stack in it in my current state. This Karak Hearn settlement, controlled by the Golden Order, much easier to take. A much easier blood host army that doesn't cost us as much. This puts us back in the game. I do get an option to get an item here, a 5% ward save, and for Scarbrand, you know I'm going to take it. Scarbrand is starting to get pretty scary at this point, and I'm beefing him up any way I can. As I come back down the hill, the Golden Order army has come out of its settlement foolishly, but luckily for it, we're not able to quite catch it, so it's able to escape for now. On the next turn, I find that it's gone south into the Fort Settlement of Fort Sol, which I don't fancy messing with when it's got a full stack in there. Those places can be pretty tough to take as they do have some strong cannons on the walls. So I'm going to attack Fjeldorf instead, as that is a much easier take, although still a siege settlement. I then, of course, bring all the boys along, raise that up, and get myself another Blood Host army, another nice fresh one. And I'm going to forget about the Golden Order for now. I'm just going to leave him down south and keep pushing north, raising up where I can, just to keep my momentum going. I seem to have some issue, though, with the summoning that I took, the technology. It doesn't actually seem to be in the battles. When I get in there, there's nothing to allow me to summon Blood Letters, as there should be the right-hand side icon, right, the little magic spell. It's not there. I don't know if that's a bug or maybe it's something because I don't have settlements. Either way, it's a big downer given the way I'm playing. This would really help me out. As I prepare to move north though towards the Reichland, guess who comes back again? It's old Golden Balls. His armies are pretty standard and not really anything to worry about. But their constant attacks are going to wear me down if I'm not careful. I've got to try to get away from him. I'm going to fight this one to get the best results. Again, it's very much the same deal. We're able to smash the infantry pretty easy. It's just making sure that the missiles don't blast us to pieces. Trying to disrupt them as much as possible. Gelt's a bit of a bitch though, hiding in the air, just casting his spells. I'm unable to do anything about him. So that's the biggest problem with this battle, is he can do quite a lot of damage with that magic, and there's not really anything I can do about him. He doesn't really come down very often, which is, you know, the smart thing to do when you're someone that can be knocked out by a well-thrown cheese sandwich. Certainly smart of the AI to keep him in the air away from Scarbrand anyway. But we beat the boy down, send him packing, and we can keep moving forward. We're starting to get some nice corruption around here now, which is going to be bad for them. Uh, time to get moving forward again. We need more slaughter, more blood hosts. We're going to do that. More armies here. Blah, blah, blah. Same old stuff. Raising them up. Moving on to Dottenbach here. I am still mostly taking blood hosts, but occasionally I do take the skulls. I'm trying to be careful with the money, not going over maybe two grand. I've got 14 grand in the bank at the moment, so we're pretty safe, but still just trying to be cautious. It's been working well for us so far. And if you're wondering how many settlements we've taken out so far, it's 16. So we're halfway to the short victory objective. We're going to roll on Knoll now, which is another nice big place to take out. And then we're going to be in the Reichland, Karl Franzland. We haven't declared war on him yet. We're going to take this place, though, get ourselves another blood army, because we're probably going to need it for taking out the Reichlands. Here we go. I decide to make this the final test of the campaign. Can I take the Reichland? Is this campaign a viable way to play? So far, it seems like it, even though there's no good reason to play like it. Although it is nice not having to worry about settlements at all, to be honest. It's just been pure fighting. I'm going to leave Scarbrand out of this fight anyway. Just let my blood hosts do this one. They're going to get the decisive victory. Going to lose some boys, but we're going to get a fresh one from this anyway. I wanted to let Scarbrand's army replenish a little bit. Just in case the big man came along, Karl Franz might have a full stack somewhere. Who knows what kind of army he'll have. 
After this, though, we decide to move on Altdorf. We're going to bring all our boys over to this place. It doesn't have a terribly amazing garrison, to be honest, so it doesn't seem like it'll be too difficult to take. No Empire armies around yet, at least. And I'm going to split one of my Blood Host armies off by itself to go and take out another settlement because it does get a really strong army. It's got a Bloodthirster, it's got some Blood Crushers and some Exalted Blood Letters. So pretty nice. And I am going to go ahead and sack a settlement here for a nice 10 grand Ubersreich, giving me up the gold. I then decide the time is now for Altdorf and we are going to go for it. Only a Pyrrhic victory, even though I've got quite a lot of healthy units and their garrison isn't anything special. So I'm going to fight it to try and get a better result to allow me to carry on to keep taking the rest of the Reichland and to not get screwed by the auto resolve. It was a pretty standard siege though. I actually took out the army rather than taking the victory point. Just found a nice place without towers blasting me in the face constantly. And this is another place that's offering a nice bit of money for the sack i could just get a blood host but for 20 grand you know i'm getting that sack i did the same at uber's wreck as well raised that up got another blood host army and with that we've pretty much got the reichland done for little defense from the empire there's only Isleheart left we'll go over and take that i'm gonna get some skulls just because i don't really know why i've got plenty of money to secure a couple more armies to be honest but i took some skulls now all i gotta do is finish off Isleheart. And we will deem this campaign pretty much a success. You can survive without any settlements, as certain factions anyway. I'm sure not any faction could pull this off. But let's just finish off our heart. Oh, ho, 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 there he is. The big man's around. Carl Franz shows his face. i got to get the hell out of there. He's got a full stack. I can't mess around with that with one small army. I realize at this point, though, this army probably isn't going to be able to outrun Carl Franz. So I put my other one with him, and those two are going to have to face him. They won't be able to outrun him. And I can prepare Scarbrand and my other armies to come and hopefully take Carl Franz out, lest he ruin this whole campaign right here. Because, you know, my Bloodhost armies here are pretty beaten up at this point. I should have just taken one from Altdorf, so I might regret that. But let's see what Carl does in this next turn. Does he maybe go after Scarbrand? Nope, he goes after the smaller two armies, as expected. One of them is pretty much done for and is going to die instantly. I did try to fight this to do something. I ended up just trying to get rid of the cannon. That was my only goal. I actually had my first army, the one that was all nearly dead. It pretty much all entirely died as the reinforcements arrived. So it was incredibly luckily timed that the rest of these units even got in the fight. Because against my first army, they just sent cavalry over and just obliterated everything I had. So it was very, very close. We're just about going to get rid of the cannon, but probably not entirely, which is a shame. But there we go. Carl Franz beats down some of our armies. And just when it seems like things can't get any worse, when we just happen to run into Carl Franz, guess who else has come back? It's motherfucking Golden Balls. Belthazar, still pissed from the other 19 times I smashed his face in, has decided to come back for a 20th face smashing. I guess it's pretty annoying when someone just swoops in and takes out pretty much your entire kingdom, huh? But I guess this is what I get for not completely finishing him off. There's only one thing for it. He is in forced march, so he is going to be a bit disadvantaged, and we're going to go for him, and we're going to smash, bonky, smash, smash his face off. Of course, it's much of the same again, just smashing the infantry, making sure the missiles don't fire. And it doesn't take long for Belthazar's mediocre army to go a-running. But while it was a mediocre army, it did wear us down a bit, because, you know, it's impossible to not take damage when you fight big armies. So the real question is, did he wear us down enough to be able to allow Carl Franz to be able to beat us up? That's the question. Well, there's only one way to find out, so we're going in for the Franz Franz, man. This is it. If we can beat Carl Franz here, we pretty much got the Reichland done for. There's going to be no hope for Eilhart over there thinking it's safe. And Carl's army, much better than Belthazar's. They've got Carl for starters, although Belthazar's magic was powerful. They've got some Reichsguard, pretty much the same in the infantry, a few extra missiles and things. So we had a mighty battle. Carl took the high ground, sat on the hill, used his artillery. We ran up there to try and get after him, tried to disrupt those missiles. Carl and Scarbrand had a bit of a row they threw down, but even Galmaraz wasn't going to save Carl. In this situation, Scarbrand fells him to take the victory. And that's going to be the end of the Carl Franz man, the Empire, the Reichland. It's all going to Scheiße, and all because of a little wandering homeless man. So with that out of the way, we will declare this a victory overall, I think. Playing homeless is a legitimate way to play, apparently. Although I think there's only a few factions that could probably pull this off. And being able to encamp stance at the end of your movement is really a key here. The Greenskins can do it. I think maybe the Beastmen can do it. Scarbrand, obviously it saved his ass a ton here. I've got him pretty beefed up at this point. He's got perfect vigor, so he's going to be a super damage dealer. Still got plenty of damage dealing coming. Got an 8% ward save now. Got a strength potion. Still got that regeneration when he's in melee as well. So he's turning into an absolute beast at this point. And as I say, I think I'd be able to do that quest battle. I've got 22 settlements done, so not far off doing the short victory conditions, maybe. So I proved in my last video, this one here, that we can survive with just one settlement. And now we can see that we can survive with no settlements, potentially. Homeless is truly the meta.
I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all the patrons who support this channel. I will see you in the future.